Back in 2019, I made a video about how Prism Game Studios' Portal Stories Mel is the closest thing we'll ever get to Portal 3. That vid is linked above and below. That game is a fan project which I still feel captures the essence of a full Portal game from narrative to gameplay. Since then, however, quite a few people have commented that Portal Reloaded, another fan project developed by Portani, is where my gaze should turn. This is really Portal 3, according to all of you. Of course, at the time, the game hadn't even come out yet, which I suppose does make it more in common with an official Portal 3. Anyways, on April 19th, Portal Reloaded finally released, so I decided to check it out for myself. After about three and a half hours, I blasted through the campaign and can conclude it's really good, but it's not Portal 3. But it doesn't need to be a competition, as this mod and Mel are attempting to do entirely different things with the Portal setting. So here's why Portal Reloaded isn't Portal 3, but is still outstanding. I would offer a spoiler warning for Reloaded, but there isn't really a narrative to speak of, and this is in and of itself why I wouldn't find it fair to compare it to Mel. Portal Reloaded has connective tissue between test chambers, but only enough to keep the player on track. It's not trying to tell a story, Story, and that's fine, because what it instead wishes to do is create a new dimension of puzzle mechanic to inspire a whole 25 chambers worth of fresh takes on Portal. These green portals allow for time travel to 20 years in the future and back, acting as sort of mirrors, meaning you only have the one time portal, but when you enter it, you exit into the past or future exactly where you walked in, just not when. It can take a moment to wrap your head around. The idea being these test chambers you're in remain entirely untouched for a 20-year period, meaning any changes you make in the past will directly affect how the chamber looks in the future. The main way this mechanic is explored is through the weighted storage cubes. Placing a cube somewhere in the past will change its location in the future, and then you can go into said future and grab that cube, moving it around freely without changing where it was in the past. The catch is, if you move the cube in the past from its position, you'll alter the timeline, and the future cube you're carrying around will disappear. After all, you could never have picked it up from where you previously had if the cube was somewhere else the entire time. This effectively means while in the past, you have two cubes to work with, which are the same cube. So long as you don't touch the past cube, the future cube can be used freely. My head hurts. By the way, despite appearances, the cleaned up chambers are actually the past, and the rotten and overgrown ones the future. Twenty years of isolation and decay will do that. You can also use the mirror-like effect of the time portal to bring generated puzzle elements from one time into another, such as lasers and hard light bridges. The laser goes into the portal one way and will reflect itself back to its generated spot in the future or past. But of course, this is a portal game, so aside from using time portals, you have the normal mechanics of the portal gun. Move from one place to another, gain momentum, all that fun stuff. But a placed portal in the past, assuming the surface you fired it upon still exists in 20 years' time, will maintain its location in the future. While in the future, however, you can freely move portals around without affecting past ones, giving you essentially five portals to think about, two in the past, two in the future, and one to travel between them. It's really difficult to explain and makes a lot more sense when playing. That didn't stop me from getting extremely confused as to how my portal layouts caused their effects while solving puzzles, though. Wait. Wait, how did I do that? What? How did I do that? I did it! How did I do that? I, I don't even know what I did! Now, with these mechanics in mind, many of the puzzles use the time travel to great, necessary effect. It doesn't feel tacked on. These levels are designed with time travel as the backbone rather than an afterthought. Without giving away any solutions, one of my favorite mechanics is using the time portal on the ground below, diving in, and keeping your momentum going through time, jumping out at the same place, different time. It really does help to think of these green portals as mirrors with a time travel mechanic, or a trampoline in this case. However, there are a few puzzles where the time travel mechanics break down a bit. For the first couple of test chambers, you're without the portal gun, as to introduce you to how the green portals work. And while it makes sense to ease players into things, I'd also like to try out the game's main mechanic sooner. But regardless, the biggest issue I have is in the actual implementation of time travel, in that some things that should theoretically work in practice, don't in reality. For instance, in chambers where a button is pressed 
used to spawn a cube, and pressing the button again despawns the current cube and creates a new one. If you've played Portal before, you'll know what I'm talking about. In theory, creating a cube in the past, going into the future, and pressing the button again should now grant you two entirely unrelated cubes. Yet the laws of touching the past cube, despawning the future cube, again, entirely different objects at this point, still apply. Except for one test chamber where this idea is a required solution. There's a certain bifurcating of mechanics which work for a puzzle game like Portal versus what would theoretically happen with the style of cause-effect time travel established by the setting. Although, if tasked with doing better, I have nothing for you. I'm of the opinion multiverse is the only time travel to make sense, but that would be an entirely different game. Regardless, an undertaking this complex is bound to have some flaws, however minor. It's not worth harping on them too much as the whole of the project is in and of itself so brilliantly realized. Overall, with the exception of Portal Stories Mel's absurdly difficult advanced levels, I've never had to think quite so hard to solve puzzles as I did in Reloaded. Not to mention, it was an entirely different method of thinking required, four-dimensionally, through time. I often had to say out loud what steps I was taking to solve a puzzle simply to keep track of it all. Okay, okay, let me, let me reset this and think about this. Okay, need portal on this surface. In future is the only place where I can put the portal on that surface. So, in the past, because once I'm in the future, what I did in the past doesn't matter. Put the laser somewhere portalable. Go to the future. By which I mean set up the future portal here. And that creates a new spot where I can portal, which is right here. There we go. Okay. Bye now. <sighs> and of course, me being me, I'd often sequence break my way past puzzle mechanics, stacking cubes in ways the developers clearly did not intend. But that's part of the fun of Portal to me, breaking it. So, if you're a fan of Portal games and are looking for something more challenging, I can't recommend Reloaded enough. It's far and away the most unique Portal experience I've ever had the pleasure of trying, and my gripes with certain puzzle mechanics are far outweighed by the brilliancy of the rest. Without much of of a story to speak of, I wouldn't call Portal Reloaded Portal 3. But that doesn't mean anything bad, it's just different, entirely its own thing. Coexisting beautifully with games like Mel and the hundreds of workshop maps I've blasted through in my time. Give it a try, Portal Reloaded is linked below. It's free so long as you own Portal 2 on Steam, you don't even need the base game installed. And while you're down there, if you wanted to follow me on Twitter or whatever, I'd appreciate it. Regardless, thank you all all so much for watching, stay safe, and take it easy!